Getting ready to buy or sell a home? Do you want to help support pro-life organizations? Then you need Real Estate for Life. Get a top-notch real estate agent and support pro-life causes. Go to realestateforlife.org to learn more. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise be Jesus and Mary, now and forever. Dear brothers and sisters, today's Mass is offered for the deceased friars, sisters, and benefactors. And I'd like to call on the intercession of Blessed Mary of Providence, who was the foundress of the Society of the Helpers of the Holy Souls. Call on her to intercede for all the deceased friars, sisters, and benefactors, as well as the Holy Souls in general. She was born on the 25th of March in 1825 in France. As a little girl, playing in the summer fields and chasing butterflies, awestruck and wondering, she paused, and after a long halt, called to her companions. Childlike, she tried to explain in metaphors that strange enlightenment that she had. She said, if one of our friends was imprisoned in a house of fire, how we should rush to her help. Then think how we should try to deliver the souls in purgatory. Later on in her life, she was granted a very real participation in the mysterious sufferings of purgatory. And the way she spoke of them made older people pause and listen. On January the 19th, 1856, she founded the Society of the Holy Souls in Paris, in France, at age 31. She died on the 7th of February, 1871, and was beatified in 1957 by Pope Pius XII. So if we think of that enlightenment that she had, if one of our friends was imprisoned in a house of fire, how we should rush to their help? Now if we think of all of our loved ones and friends being imprisoned, as it were, in a house of fire, it will probably make us pray more for them, make us have masses said for them, offer up sacrifices for them and do what we can to lessen their sufferings and have them released from purgatory so that they can go to heaven. We will certainly be rewarded by these souls if we have help to release them. But the souls in purgatory cannot help themselves and they need us to help them. They need us to think about them and remember them so that we pray for them and do what we can to help them. For many souls who have passed away have been forgotten. It's good that if you can, go to a cemetery and pray for the souls who are buried there. And generally pray for the holy souls at different points during the day. You can say the prayer, eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon them. May they rest in peace. Amen. As religious, at times you hear stories about convents and friaries where people were hearing noises um, and they couldn't see who was making the noise. And you know, you'd, you'd, you'd hear about the, so for a knocking as if someone's knocking on a wall and you know, you can't see who it is. And this will continue for a period of time. Um, and the mystery would be unsolved, let's say. And then a decision is made to have a Mass said for the Holy Souls. And as soon as the Mass for the Holy Souls is offered, no more noise, no more knocking noise. Um, and it's, everything is back to normal. You'll find in the lives of the saints, at times God allows the souls in purgatory to appear. So, for example, um, in the life of St. Padre Pio of Petrocina, many times um, the souls in purgatory would appear to, uh, 
to um, tell him um, their needs, that they would like him to help them. And, and he helped to release many souls from purgatory. So sometimes God can permit people to even see the holy souls in purgatory. Let us pray for the holy souls, and let us pray also for the dying, those who are in their last moments. Let us pray to Saint Joseph, who is the patron of a happy death. Let us, let us pray to Saint Joseph for the dying and for the souls in purgatory. And let us invoke the Blessed Virgin Mary, as we say in the Hail Mary, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. That will be a terrible hour in many ways because the devil will try his best to um, take us to hell. And let us do what we can to promote the first Fridays and first Saturdays devotion. And let us place the dying into the most chaste heart of Saint Joseph, the patron of the dying. I'd like to conclude by reading a quote of Saint Alphonsus Liguori on Saint Joseph. Since we must all die, we should cherish a special devotion to Saint Joseph, that he may obtain for us a happy death. All Christians regard him as the advocate of the dying, who had honored him during their life, and for three reasons. First, because Jesus Christ loved him, not only as a friend, but as a father. And on this account, his mediation is far more efficacious than that of any other saint. Second, because St. Joseph has obtained special power against the evil spirits who tempt us with redoubled vigor at the hour of death. Third, the assistance given St. Joseph at his death by Jesus and Mary obtained for him the right to secure a holy and peaceful death for his servants. Hence, if they invoke him at the hour of death, he will not only help them, but he will also obtain for them the assistance of Jesus and Mary. So let us pray um, to St. Joseph for those in their last moments. Pray for those in hospitals. Pray for those in hospices and entrust them to St. Joseph, the patron of a good and holy death. And let us pray for the holy souls, in particular, the deceased friars, sisters, and their benefactors. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.